very interesting history about them is uh, they are descendants from Hagoth in the Book of Mormon. Okay, they can trace their genealogy back that far. Okay, so uh, there's a so they're of the house of Israel. Um, if you read in Alma, it talks about that there were you know Hagoth took a group of people and took boats and went east and then like a group came back and then they left again and were never heard of again. They populated the Hawaiian Islands and to further populate uh, um, you know, Tonga, Samoa, uh, and New Zealand. Now there's uh, there was a guy there, uh, and this was very early in my mission. I went to a lot of meetings that are called Wanangas. They're Think of them as a fireside, but strictly like for the Maori people. And they taught, I mean, genealogy is huge. Not just like church genealogy, but genealogy in general is very big um, for the Maori people. And the church is, one out of every 10 Maoris are members of the church there. It's huge. Uh, and there's actually, if you ever watch the video, um, An Ensign to the Nation, it talks about how the gospel was brought to the Maori people that, um, you know, as early Christian missionaries were, uh, you know, teaching uh, the people, they, the Maori people had these chiefs uh, that almost like Indian chiefs. I mean, they are, they're spiritual leaders. They're kind of their go-to for guidance. And uh, one of their most respected uh, leaders, uh, or, you know, chiefs told them he prophesied. He went to his house and fasted for like five days, and then came out and professed saying the. Um, sorry, this actually gets me. Spirit hits you in weird ways. It's funny because it's like the spirit hits you, and you know that what you're saying is true, and it's just this. It's interesting. So. He came out saying the the church for the Maoris has not yet arrived, but you'll you'll recognize it when it comes, because uh, when they pray they'll raise their right hand, and their uh, their missionaries will come in pairs of two, and he gave a few other instances that are like obviously he's talking about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and sure enough when the Mormon missionaries first came the Maori people accepted the gospel in droves, um, where at one point it was like one out of every 10 are members of the church. So you can't go very far, even if you talk with a Maori that is not a member, uh, chances are almost 100% that somebody in his immediate or very close to immediate family is a member or was a member or is inactive. I mean, you, you can't go generations. It's almost impossible without a member in their family. So you're never going to find a Maori that is not very familiar with the church. Okay. Again, the further you go north, that culture is very thick. And in fact, there was kind of this resurgence of the Maori culture because um, like 30 years ago, for whatever reason, the government actually banned them speaking their language in like public schools and things like that. So a lot of their culture, a lot of their language was lost on people, you know, 20 years older than me. Uh, but people my age, there was this huge kind of revolution uh, to kind of bring back the language, the culture. So um, people, I mean, were extremely intensely uh, passionate about their culture. And uh, there was a guy named Hedwini Jones that um, he put together very intense, very detailed, very researched academic um firesides that the purpose of this fireside was a combination of the culture that is very well known and the genealogy and history of the Maori people but he would show them you are direct descendants from these people in the Book of Mormon so the fireside was to show non-members look this book is true so it, I mean it was a very powerful tool originally in the mission uh, where but and and my initial mission president actually served as a missionary years and years and years and years ago when they were riding horses in the middle of nowhere. And so, you know, he was dead set. It was actually a separate discussion, like, that we were supposed to memorize and teach. I mean, that 
and now the church headquarters probably wouldn't have approved of teaching anything other than faith and repentance and baptism but for but that my mission president was only in there for a couple months and then when my new mission president came in there president smyberg he was like no you know i'm not saying that's not important you know everything that was being taught was true but you don't want people coming into the church just because of facts you know it's like farm research you know you don't want them saying because there was you know bones in south america the book of mormon is true so he he was very different in his you teach by the spirit you teach by the book of mormon so there was a, a big shift but like a lot of things people get you know missionaries get culturally ingrained just like members do and uh so he had to kind of do some cleaning of the, of the house in the mission of breaking those habits that stop focusing you know don't spend all your time at these firesides that this guy puts on um, you know, teach by the spirit. So again, where I was at, that was a very common practice, um, where he would do these firesides and, uh, very large Maori population. Um, and so it was just, it was a really unique place to serve because the culture was so strong there. Whereas you go into Auckland, you know, it's just a normal city. The, the Maoris that are there a little bit more, not as interested in their culture. Whereas again, the further, the more rural you get out, it's like they're hardcore, um, about their roots, their traditions and so on and so forth. Um, sometimes to a fault where it, because they're so, I mean, I think some of the, uh, was it elder Oaks gave a talk a few years ago where he kind of chastised the church culturally saying, look, if your culture is keeping you from like, following the gospel, give up that culture. So there was some traditions um, and beliefs held by the Maori population in general that, you know, some people wouldn't join the church because that, you know, bat butted heads. So it was a, an interesting, pretty cool uh, dynamic to, to come into.